Welcome everyone to another episode of the Channel of Holdings E3 coverage. This time we're gonna cover Nintendo and the PC. Because mm -hmm. nothing goes together like Nintendo and PC. Absolutely. <laughs> They're like a match made in heaven. <laughs> well, I mean, alright. If uh, you had a PC uh -huh. and a Wii U, right. you would pretty much be covered for... 98% of any game ever. Correct. Yeah, you're gonna... That, that covers pretty much all your bases. Yeah. I mean, because all... Everything Microsoft is doing is basically gonna end up on PC. Uh-huh. The only thing you're really missing are the Sony exclusives. Correct. Other than that, you're not really missing anything else. True. So, I mean, <laughs> that's all you really need is a Wii U mm -hmm. and a PC. And that'll, like you said, that'll get you most of the games out there. Pretty much. Alright, so. First up, Nintendo. Uh-huh. What, uh, what did you, what were your overall impressions of Nintendo's conference? It was fun. <laughs> that is true. It was probably one of the most fun out of all of them. Uh-huh. I really loved, like, my favorite thing were the puppets. Right. Sorry, I mean the Muppets. <laughs> Sorry, that's trademarked. The puppets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. It really was. I mean, the transitions between uh, segments uh -huh. were really fun and entertaining. Yeah, they were especially great. Just like my favorite one is where I think it was Awada. Okay. Who was sitting at his desk and the water feature was there. Oh, right. And he's just not doing anything and then just looks over at the camera <laughs> and it just cuts right to the next part. Yeah, it was good. That was probably my favorite one. Yeah, that was a really good, fun transition. Yeah. I think the weirdest one was when they started turning into Star Fox characters. Right, yeah. It definitely was like, <laughs> alright, first they turned into Muppets. Yep. Now, wait, what what's going on? No. I'm confused. <laughs> Yeah, it was really confusing. Speaking of, uh huh, new Star Fox. Yeah, new Star Fox. Yeah. Were you ever, uh, were you ever a fan of Star Fox? I have never played a Star Fox game in my life. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it looks cool. There's the Star Fox for our coverage. <laughs> <laughs> and I've kind of wanted to play it. Okay. But I've never owned it or known anyone who's owned it. Your brother doesn't have one. No. Nope. We never, never got it. But he's like the biggest Nintendo fan I know. Right. Yeah, but no, we, we never we never got a copy of it. Weird. Yeah. So right, do you think he would have gone for that one? I don't know. I mean, he's not he's not the biggest into, like, spaceship stuff. Ah, uh, that's true. He hates sci-fi. Uh, not all sci-fi. He hates most sci-fi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. All right, no, that's understandable. Yeah, uh, Nintendo's conference was really kind of interesting for me. Uh-huh. Because there were things that I wanted. Right. And things that I were super excited for. You know, like a new... I was really hopeful for a new Metroid. But... Okay. And we got a new Metroid. Uh-huh. But we got the one nobody wanted. Right. It's not Samus. Uh-huh. It's Metroid Prime. But on the 3DS. Uh-huh. Nobody wants that particular <laughs> Metroid on a 3DS. Yes. Because first-person shooter does not work on 3DS. Right. As much as I would want it to, and I think there's some interesting mechanics you could do with that, Yeah. it, uh, not so much. No. They, they've done one before. Okay. It was Metroid Prime Hunters. Right. Um, it, it was not the most well-received of all the Metroids. Uh-huh. It wasn't the best played of all the Metroids. Right. But it was, you know, it was still a Metroid game, so of course it sold. Right, right, of course. And, you know, a lot of people were really hopeful for, like, a really good 2D Zelda on the 3DS and, like, a really nice 3D one on the Wii U. Uh-huh. Either one of those would have been fine. Yeah. However, they gave us a 3D one that has nothing to do with Metroid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure what it was is some the company was working on a first person shooter. Uh-huh. And then they were like, "Cool, but we need to attach it to something that'll sell." Right. Let's attach it to Metroid. I could see that being a thing. Yeah. I mean, it happens quite a lot. Yeah. 
So, uh, that was disappointing. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Monkey. Uh -huh. Yeah. New Legend of Zelda. Yeah, New Legend of Zelda. For the 3DS. Right, not not the Wii U one. No, not the one everybody wanted. Right. Again. Yeah. That kind of felt like the theme of this conference. Yeah. It was like It was probably the most fun to watch. Right. But the content itself was just like, that's not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. I, I don't... Why? Why would you do this to us? <laughs> no, I, I definitely get that. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of... Like, yeah, we got a Metroid title. <laughs> we got half a Metroid game. Right. That's something, right? Yeah, that, that counts. That's Metroid. Mm -hmm. Got Metroid in the title. <laughs> totally counts. Yeah. Dibs on the game. But were there were there any games in particular that you were kind of looking forward to or looked interesting to you? I have a... I kind of want to say a strange fascination with uh, Shin Megami Cross Fire Emblem. Oh, okay, yeah, the one that we saw where I thought it was a Vocaloid thing at right. first. Right, just because I have no idea what's happening, <laughs> I feel like I need to know. So I would consider buying the game just because I don't understand what's happening. Yeah, I legitimately have no clue what's going on in that game. Mm -hmm. But it looks really interesting. Right. But at the same time, it's like... Legitimately, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> there's music, uh -huh. there's dancing, there yeah. had th I I have no idea what was happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, yeah, that one that interests me. Yeah, for sure. There was one game that okay. really got my attention as well. Uh-huh. And that was uh the new Paper Mario Cross Oh uh, Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi. Yeah. Where it was, I think it's Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. Yeah, yeah. Where that one looks super cool. Mm hmm. Because I like the Mario and Luigi titles. I know not, there's some people who are just like, meh. But so far, I've been enjoying them. That's except cool. Except for the last one. Ah. Uh. Just because I am not a child. Right. I do not need to be told how to do the tutorial. Ah. Every yes. single time I do a new attack. Mm -hmm. And the same attack. Yeah, that that sounds like a little bit of a problem. It, yeah. It's like, Nintendo games used to be really hard. Right. Now they're a little too easy. Yeah, they're, I wouldn't say modern Nintendo games are known for being difficult. No, nothing about them is really difficult. So, oh, overall, I, I enjoyed watching the Nintendo conference. Right. But I didn't really enjoy the content that much. Okay. What, what, what are your... Hmm? Do, do you have anything to say about Nintendo? Oh. Uh, <laughs> are I, you more excited about the PC one? <laughs> I was more excited about the PC one. <laughs> uh, I did... I was surprised by how much I enjoyed watching the Nintendo conference. Yeah, it was so cool. And I wasn't expecting the Shin Megami Cross Fire Emblem. Yep. Uh, and it was cool to see another, like, another Paper Mario game. Sorta. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's got Paper Mario in it. <laughs> I feel like that's, also, like, aside from disappointment. Uh-huh. It was also, and, you know, this is what we want to say. It's kind of like the Sorta conference. Like, we sort of have a Metroid. Right. We sort of have a Paper Mario. Yes. That's, that's kind of what this, uh, this Nintendo conference was. It had to balance out the other really awesome ones. Mm-hmm. You can't have too much awesome in one conference, otherwise... <laughs> it's just bad things. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you have any other uh, particular things about that conference? Um, I have a question for you. Sure. So you, you introduced me to Fire Emblem. Okay. By telling me about Fire Emblem. Right. I still, you know, still trying to work on the 3DS one. Okay. Now we have a new 3DS one. Yes. Where I don't know what's going on and nothing looks similar to the last one. Right. Is that normal for Fire? Yes. Uh, they normally are not connected at all. Oh, okay. Like, every once in a while, you'll have, like, two games in a row or something. Yeah. Or later on, they'll decide, like, hey, we're going to make a, either a sequel or a prequel. Okay. Like, the first Fire Emblem game that came to America was a prequel to the Fire Emblem game featuring Roy. Okay. So you played as Roy's dad. Got it. 
Uh, That's really interesting. And the couple of the GameCube ones, I think, were sequels. Like, you had one and then it's sequel. Okay. But other than that, a lot of them just aren't even connected in the same world. Alright, so it's similar to, like, a Final Fantasy thing. Right. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so something I'm used to already. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be, like... You, you can basically be able to just play through the game and not not have to worry how it relates to the other ones. Got it. I, I can appreciate that. Because, I mean, there are times where it's just like, Hey, here's this massive new game. Oh, if you haven't played the last eight, you have no idea what's going on. Right. Which can be a problem for new players. Ex well, at that point, there are no new players. <laughs> that's, I mean, yes. <laughs> that That's fair. Yeah. Uh, other than that, that, that was a whiff. Mm-hmm. Other than that, that's pretty much all I have on Nintendo. Other than, I mean, we have a new Fire Emblem. Yeah. Uh, Paper Jam looks interesting. Uh huh. The last thing I want to say about Nintendo is that the Yoshi's Woolly World amiibos. Oh right, yeah. Are f adorable, <laughs> and I want them. Mm hmm. I want all of them. Yeah, they look pretty cute. Even though there's only three. Well, well yeah. Why not? Why not collect them all? Exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I was disappointed in. Another thing. There was no. nothing on Pokemon. Hmm. Uh, I remember someone... Th they had some sort of Monster Razor game, didn't they? Yeah, they had uh, Tokai uh, Toka Watch. Right! Yeah, uh, Yokai Watch. Yokai Watch. Where, you know, Yokai are like these little spirit demon things. Mm hmm Where anytime something small bad happens, you blame the Yokai. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> Yeah, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But other than that, right, Nintendo's conference overall, other than just, you know, was a lot of fun to watch. Right. It was rather disappointing. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of... It was. It's not that the stuff that came out with was bad, it's just it's not what people were expecting or really anticipating. Or wanted Right, that. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, we want a new Metroid game, but we want a Metroid game. Right, with Samus and, you know, more familiar with the the core themes of the, the series. Exactly, and this is more like a multiplayer, weird 3D shooter on 3DS. Yeah, that yeah. happens to have Metroid in the title. Exactly. I think the same thing kind of felt like with uh, the new Zelda, mm. where it's like, hey, we have a Zelda game. It's not the Wii U one that you wanted. It's more like Four Swords, which was fun, but it ruins friendships. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can do that. That's not what I wanted to do. Because <laughs> I, I know for in my college we had the One Up Club. Uh huh. That game was pretty much officially banned. Right. From the One Up Club because. Things got awfully heated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was good about doing that. Yeah. So yeah, that was Nintendo. Thank you, Nintendo. We'll uh, see you next year. So. Uh huh. The PC. The PC. Wasn't it really cool when they came out with the uh, 370x GPU? video card right that amd showed off yeah 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 and the new fury x right and how like it was kind of cool that they had an amd guy like the creative scientist guy be the host or whatever for the show oh yeah the guy with the coolest job title in the world yeah yeah chief gaming scientist yeah that's the that's the title and then you know the best part of the whole thing uh-huh was the beautiful 4k first video of battlefront yeah that was awesome that was awesome. Hold on. I've been told that is not the correct conference. Oh. Um. In fact, there was another conference. Also, <laughs> also powered by AMD. Uh huh. But PC gaming. Ah. So you mean that hour-long video we watched? Yep. It turns out the actual one is two hours. Oh. Well, we'll be right back. And we're back! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, so, the actual PC conference. Hosted by Day9. Yes. Who apparently is important for something. Uh, 
He's one of the the big StarCraft II shoutcasters. Oh, like back in our early, early episodes when you tried to shoutcast Titanfall. Right. Got it. Yes. All right. Okay. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, he was very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a lot of fun. That's what happens when I try and do a trick. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun watching him. Yeah. And just, I really loved how... Like we'll discuss tomorrow with Aisha Tyler. Uh huh. How he can just roll with it. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, "All right, this is happening." Yep. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Mm hmm. I was just like, I appreciate that, especially the Wu guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he he did a good, like, in general, the PC gaming community, and it was reflected in the audience there. Yes. Uh, it tends to be like they're excited about some things, but they're not like. They never really seem to get as hyped as, like, at a big console conference, at, like, the Microsoft conference or something. Yeah. So, it was nice that he was able to try to... Try to get that in there. Yeah, yeah, bring in that enthusiasm. No, I, I appreciated it. Uh, it. For me, it's kind of boring for a conference when people aren't super excited. Right, yeah, when they're just sort of like, yep, this is happening. Yeah, like, um... Like, since this is PC, I can talk about Oculus. I did watch the Oculus conference they had. Okay. It was so boring. Mm. And it was so awkward. Yeah. And it was it was not a good conference at all mm. for me. Just because, yeah, it's VR. And VR can be interesting. But it's one of the hardest things to demo to a mass audience. Right. So, there was one point where there was a T-Rex on the screen. Mm -hmm. And they were like, alright, now you see this T-Rex, it's 2D, it's not very scary. It's just like, whatever. Now, imagine it coming out of the screen. Mm. And imagine it looming over you. And there were a lot of awkward pauses for uh, applause. Uh, and nobody's clapping. Yeah. That's, that's not so good. No. And it's particularly, like, unfortunate that that happened. Because at the PC conference, like, they showed a really cool application of VR with Eve Valkyrie. Oh, yeah. Like, Eve Valkyrie looks really cool and would be a lot of fun with VR. Yeah, it's like an awesome fighter sim in space. And, like, you can look around the cockpit and it looks like you're there. And Exactly. Like, it's something I would really enjoy. Like, I think Elite Dangerous should do, like, the same thing. Oh, yeah. That would be sick. Because they were also at the PC conference. Yeah. And if they got a hold of, like, that VR, like, they got on that Oculus or some other VR system? Oh, yeah, like, um, well, I mean, since it's PC and PC is really Microsoft. Right. Uh, you could, with, you know, Oculus, uh -huh. you can stream your Xbox One games to your PC, to your Oculus. Yeah. So, I mean, you could kind of do VR through that. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, what was your favorite thing from the PC oh, conference? Favorite thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, like your highlights. Okay. Uh, one of the the funnest things I'm looking forward to, and people may not understand this at first, but listen to the explanation and you'll understand why. Maybe. American Truck Simulator is being a thing. Oh God. The thing that Day 9 sold out to. Yes. American Truck Simulator. It's going to be awesome. It looks... I've got nothing. <laughs> I, I, I can't continue that on. <laughs> no, no. That, that's a perfectly fine explanation. Like, you don't have to say anything. You don't no. have to say it looks good. You don't have to say it sounds like it's going to play good. Because it's American Truck Simulator. <laughs> like, European Truck Simulator is like... Loved by certain PC fans. Yeah. Not like, goat, like Goat Simulator. Right. Except it's not because it's fun, but it's because, like, you actually have to, like, go through these really mundane tasks of driving a truck. <laughs> it's not like a racing game where you're trying to go really fast. Like, no, you have to, like, it's like driving a truck is for your job. Yeah, which does not sound fun to me, but... I'm, I'm clearly not their demographic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say it becomes increasingly more fun when you're watching somebody play it. Yep. 
so you don't have to do anything and either you or both you and the person playing are you know slightly intoxicated right <laughs> the enjoyment level goes up considerably Oh, I'm, I'm sure it does. <laughs> that maybe have to be something we do where we watch a Let's Play and just have a couple drinks. Yeah. And just find someone who is also having a couple drinks. Mm-hmm. And just see how their driving just, you know, goes horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's like the legal way to watch somebody drink and drive. <laughs> because, like, you know, you don't want that to happen in real life. No, that would be awful. But when nobody can get harmed from it, because it's a video game. Yep. Like, it, it can be a good time. <laughs> it sounds like a good time. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, American Truck Simulator. <laughs> what are what are some of your other highlights? Oh, uh, there was this one game, um, Gungeon. Enter the Gungeon. Oh god, Enter the Dungeon. Gungeon. Uh huh. Sounds like the most ridiculous and fun game ever. Yeah. So like. The easiest way to describe it is take uh, Binding of Isaac. Yep. And then give it, like, the difficulty of Dark Souls. Okay. And then you throw in Ikaruga, so it's like a, a bullet hell. It's a bullet hell? Yeah. Which, okay, I've played Ikaruga. Uh-huh. Once. Yes. <laughs> because it was free. Uh-huh. And, oh my god, that game was difficult. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're no slouch on difficulty either. No. Like, Ikaruga, not an easy game. Uh-huh. Binding of Isaac, not an easy game. Yeah. Dark Souls, not an easy game. <laughs> so they took, like, the three hardest games... Uh-huh. ...and put them into one game. Yeah. Who would do that? <laughs> Someone who decided this would be awesome. <laughs> No, that was a great game. I'm, I'm super excited to play it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard. I'm going to be you know surprised if we ever get past the first Gungeon. Right. But, oh man, it looks so much fun. Yeah. Like, especially the rainbow laser gun. Right, that they yes. Showed that when you use makes the sound, the music in the game happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. That looks super fun. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a good time. Yeah. What else? What are some other uh, games or some of the show? Uh, another game that I'm excited for, again, not because I want to play it, but because I want to watch people play it, <laughs> Yeah, is Soma. Nope. The game from nope. the uh, nope. creators of... Nope, uh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope. Amnesia. I know. So, like, I'm excited for that because I am going to have a great time <laughs> watching other people on YouTube play it. And, and then cry? You, yes, cry and scream like little children. Mm, that's just... Mm, nope. <laughs> I, okay, so I don't do horror games. Like, okay. I'm, I'm sure most people know now. Right. Soma just looks like the most messed up game ever. <laughs> it looks really creepy. Uh-huh. Really scary. Yeah. Not looking forward to that. Uh-huh. However, hearing your stories of people playing it will be entertaining <laughs> yes <laughs> for sure oh wow some of it looks really weird mm -hmm. super scary and the guys who did amnesia the dark descent don't they also do a pig one a pig one like i could have sworn there was like a sequel to it something to do about pigs uh it's possible i don't know it's, it's been a while Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Right. Uh, did you have any particular standouts? Uh, ooh. There weren't many standouts that got me super excited. Sure. Just because I don't have a PC. Right. And, like, the only time I really play PC games is when you bring your computer over. Uh-huh. Which you should probably do more often. Sure. And then, but there were a couple that I really enjoyed, such as, like, Enter the Gungeon. Right. That looks like the greatest game ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I appreciate Elite Dangerous. Uh huh. The guy was there. They he talked about some stuff there, and that got me really interested in it. Yeah. And it got me to download the early access version on the Xbox. Mm hmm. So I'm looking forward to playing that for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to watch you play it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think. The best part for me was when Cliff Bazinski 
Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. The man who created uh, Unreal Tournament. Yes. And Gears of War. Uh-huh. Even though I don't like Gears of War. Sure. He has a new project coming out, and the way he was describing it just sound, made it sound really cool. It was Project Blue Streak. Oh, right. Yeah, it was taking some of the, like, the really great things he likes about first-person shooters, and the art style is a mix between, like, Battleborn uh -huh. and Gigantic. Yeah. With the more, like, hyper-realistic one, but it's somewhere in the center. Yeah. Which is something, like, I love the hyper-stylized ones. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of hyper-realistic games. Right. Because I don't play games to imitate, you know, to be hyper-realistic. I play them to kind of escape. Sure. Life. Yeah. So, um, like, they look really cool when they get them right. Yeah. But I prefer the more artistic ones. Sure. Which is why I really also loved it when Beyond Sight, or Beyond Eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, Beyond Eyes. Yeah, where you play, uh, you're a little girl who's blind. Right. And... The way they describe the game is, you know, you hear a water. So mm -hmm. you think, you imagine a beautiful fountain. Right. But then when you get closer, you realize, oh, it's a horrible sewage pump. Right. But it has the same sound as the thing. Right. And I really, I think that sounds really cool. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds awesome. Yeah. And so, and there was one point where you see a tree and there's like this little chirping from it uh -huh. and she believes that it's a uh, it's a like her perspective even though she's blind she sees a tree right or perceives a tree right but when we get closer it turns out it was a one of, a stop sign one yes. of those stop lights yep where they now chirp at you yeah when yeah. it's time for you to go mm -hmm. for those who are deaf yeah not deaf blind yeah that yeah, chirping would be less useful if you were deaf you may be able to feel it. <laughs> um, like Beethoven. Yes. <sighs> yeah. But no, like, that was really cool. Um, overall, they didn't show a lot of games. Correct. Like, in, they didn't show a lot of games in the way all their conferences did. Right. For this one, they more did interviews with the people about the game. Yeah, you gotta spend more time with each developer. Exactly. And I really enjoy listening to the developer stories, because mm -hmm. I've tried to make games before. Yeah. I have helped kids modify games before. Uh-huh. And just being able to really get, you know, like, in-depth with the story of why they did it and how they're doing it. Yes. Yeah. And why it's important for PC and why they're, like, super excited to work on it. That's the part I love the most, and why the PC one was probably, out of all of them, mm -hmm. probably my second or third favorite of all the conferences. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm not even a PC gamer, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. You have any, any other last words on uh, PC or anything you want to say or talk about? Um, I mean, like... There's other games there I could continue to talk about, like yeah. Heroes of the Swarm is getting an expansion, which is super strange for a MOBA. And it's been out, what, three weeks? Right. And it's already, it's like, hey, here's expansion. Yep. But we're Blizzard, so you know it's going to be good. Yeah. Guild Wars 2 is getting a cool-looking expansion. Yes. I want to talk about Guild Wars 2. Okay. I may not have a PC, but I got a Mac that can play Guild Wars 2 to the max. <laughs> All and right. it is awesome. And Heroes of the Swarm, I love... So, like, most MMOs, uh -huh. you get a guild hall. Yes. Where it's just a nice building. Yep. Sometimes a hut. Yes. Depends on the game. Right. This is giving you, like, a city. Yes. Like, you have to go in. You have to fight for it. You uh -huh. gotta fight Jungle Dragon's minions. Yeah. So that you can have this. Yeah, I, I think Guild Wars is doing, like, a really cool thing, like, with that approach to a guild yeah. hall. Yeah. It looks so good and so much fun. Mm-hmm. And... Like, I, I haven't played Guild Wars in a while just because I haven't had time. Right. Because we're doing the show and everything else. Yeah, yeah. This is making me want to go back into it and making me want to be like, hey, friends, come play Guild Wars with me. Because <laughs> right now I have nobody that'll play Guild Wars. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I get that. And when you're playing an MMO by yourself. It's it's a rough time. It's not an MMO. <laughs> no. <laughs> Monkey. Uh huh. You should get Guild Wars 2. I will consider it. 
<laughs> that's monkey's way of saying no. That's a horrible idea without hurting your feelings. I mean, the okay, the game <laughs> looks really cool. Yes. Like I don't think anyone can deny that it looks cool. It's got some really cool ideas. Yep. But like you said, the thing with MMOs is like it requires people and time. Two things that you're not big on. Right. I'm not I don't have a whole lot of either of those at my disposal. Yeah, me either. Well, there went that. <laughs> but I do believe that one of the games we do play on this channel every week, Destiny, uh huh, should really take note of those guild halls. Right. Yeah, Destiny, Bungie, get on that. <laughs> Cause that was awesome. It was probably my favorite part. Yeah. Like of the games. Yeah, yeah. Other than the interviews, like definitely the guild halls thing was probably the best part. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Alright, well, I think that does it for our Nintendo and PC coverage. Yeah, I think that about wraps that up. Yeah. Tune in for tomorrow when we handle uh, EA and Ubisoft. Yeah. And The Division. Yes. See you guys next time. Bye!